Hey, welcome back. So we're going to be starting videos on applications of the definite integral. Um, basically, we're going to be using integrals to calculate things like area, and volume, and curve length, and work. All these different things you probably didn't know you could calculate with integrals. Uh, before you watch these videos, I suggest that you have a strong understanding of how integrals work. And remember, if you have any questions, please feel free to email me at absolutemathematics at yahoo.ca. I'd be happy to answer your questions if I can. Alright, so we're going to be starting off with area and how to calculate it. So what is area? Well, you guys all know what area is. I'm not going to go into it. But how does this area differ from area you've calculated in a circle or a rectangle like before? Well, it's actually more similar than you think. It's just broken down into little rectangles. Okay, so let me explain. Uh, suppose you have two functions. So we have one function, which is f of x, which represents this squiggly line right here. And then you have a second function, g of x, which is below our first function, g of x, right here, represented by this line. And what we want to do is we want to calculate the area between them shaded in by my pencil, all right? And we want it to be between x value A and x value B. Okay, so we just chose those. They, they can be at random. If we really wanted, we could take the area and stop it at this x line right here and just take the area from A all the way to my pencil there. And that would be the area. All right, so these bounds don't really matter. It's just you have to put them in, all right? But they can change freely, it doesn't really matter. All right, so if we want to calculate this area, we can't really do height times width like we would do for a rectangle or uh, pi, pi r squared for like a circle. And there's no special formula for different functions because all functions can be different, right? So what we do, is actually when you take an integral, an integral actually makes a rectangle, like a very, very, very small rectangle between two points. And with this rectangle, we can actually, we know the formula for calculating the area of a rectangle, so we can do that. And by doing that, we get a small, small fraction of our whole area. And by doing this, we actually take an infinite amount of little rectangles between our upper and lower function and that way once we add them all up we get the complete area of our between our two functions. Let me try to explain a bit more. Okay, so the area of the region between f of x, so between here and g of x, all this, right, on the interval from a to b is represented by this formula right here. So we take the integral from a to b, so whatever we want these to be, right now we want them to be a, b, so we have that, and we take our functions, and we take one, and we subtract the other. Now which is which? Well, your upper function always goes first. Which one is your upper function? Your upper function is always the one that's on top of the other, or higher than the other, or has greater values than the other. As you can see right here, it's clear that f of x is greater than g of x. And another way you can do this is you can draw your rectangle, which attaches the two, and whichever function touches the top of your rectangle is your upper function. So as you can see, our rectangle here, f of x touches the top of our rectangle. So f of x is our upper. So we put f of x first, and then we subtract our lower one, which touches the bottom of our rectangle, minus g of x. And then we times it by d of x. But d of x is always part of the integral, so you don't have to worry about that. Now what does this represent? Well, remember that the integral splits up our, our, our area into little, 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 squ uh, little rectangles. An infinite amount from a to b, so there's actually like hundreds of thousands of millions of little, little rectangles between here. And if I actually made this one just bigger so you can actually see that I've put some more over here. Now remember we can calculate the area of these rectangles 
by finding the height of this rectangle and the width and timesing them by each other to find the area of this rectangle. And then we just add up all the area of these imaginary rectangles between the upper and lower to get our full area. Now how do we do this? Well, we can actually calculate the height of this rectangle by taking our upper function and subtracting our, our lower function. And as you can see, it'll give us the height. And what I did here is I actually zoomed in this rectangle here and I put it here. So this is our rectangle, and this is actually our upper function, f of x, and this is our lower function, g of x. I just zoomed in, basically. Now, if we take the value of f of x at this point, and subtract our value of g of x at this point, at the same point, that should give us the height of our rectangle. And that's exactly what we do in the formula to find our height. And now the width of our rectangle is actually just d of x, which is right here. So by multiplying these two together, we actually get the area of this rectangle right here, which is actually perfect because if we find the area here, and then we do the same thing for a rectangle right beside this rectangle and then beside that one and beside that one it continues forever until it gets to B and then we add all those together then we found the area of all of this and that's exactly what the integral does the integral tells it that from A to B we're gonna make an infinite amount of little rectangles which we're gonna calculate using this and we're going to add all those areas together and that's going to give us the complete area of between our two functions. So I hope that makes sense. It's, it's kind of more technical, more theoretical, all right? And it's good for you to understand this function or well, this for, whatever you want to call it this. I like to call it a formula. It's not really a formula, but whatever. It's good for you to understand how it works because it makes difficult problems easier but if you don't really understand right now it's alright it'll come to you as you do more problems and some people don't even ever really know what it means they just use it and they get the right answer so it's up to you but I suggest you actually learn and understand what this means so in our next video um, I'm gonna be doing actual problems and we're solving them I'll do like three or four and they're just gonna get harder and harder alright thanks